Hello, my name is Ruslan and I am the developer of the Skysphere 2 project on the Unreal Engine 4 Marketplace. In this instruction I will tell you about all the features of this project and also show how you can change the appearance of the sphere, set up lightning, tornadoes, rain, the speed of the night, add a new type of weather and much more. Let's start. First of all, I want to tell you some words about BP Skysphere space device. Sky, it's a static mesh in which sky colors changes with the time. Sun rotator, it's a skin component which controls sun's rotation. Sun flare and sun lens flare, it's particles responsible for the sun and lens visualization. Clouds, it's a static mesh with clouds material. Directional light, it's a light source. Falling stars. It's a particle which visualizes falling stars at the night. Exponential high fog. It's a fog. Skylight. It's an extra light which was created for more realistic render. Kabulu spline. It's a spline. This component is a trajectory of the Kabulu planet. Kabulu planet is Earth's planet satellite. All data that you can change are in two data tables named day-night sky and weather. The data table named day-night sky controls visualizing of sky without clouds. The second data table named weather controls clouds and sky's parameters during the certain weather condition. For example, you can make your sky red and clouds green or yellow. It doesn't matter, you can do all what you want. In fact, there are a lot of settings which you can regulate for creating your own fantastic weather mode. So, after passing of the PSKSphere device, I suggest you to go to familiarization with a special instrument which you can use to control the night cycle. As you can understand, controls is going by changing data table's parameters. Let's take a closer look on it. This data table consists of a huge count of parameters which you can change as you want. You can easily understand what controls every parameter if you read its name. Also, I need to tell you how to change parameters of the day-night sky data table and what means parameters with prefixes A and B. The fact that A is a special marker from which starts the cycle of changing sky and clouds parameters. B is a finish. In other words, a value of parameters with prefix A interpolates to value of parameter with prefix B. In this way, we can make one important conclusion. If you want to change values smoothly, then a value of parameter with prefix A must be same as value of parameter with prefix B from the past row of the data table. I think that we should make out on an example. It will be better for your understanding, so let's take a look on rows named late morning and early day, namely on parameter horizon brightness. Uh, now we should look at late morning arrow and uh, take a look on parameter called horizon brightness with the prefix B. The value of this parameter is quarter unit. It's here, okay? So the parameter with prefix A of the next row named um, early day must be quarter unit 2. Yes, it's very important, so you should know, you should remember this. If it is, um, for example, not quarter unit but maybe 10, then when switching it to late morning, the value of horizon brightness will change sharply from quarter unit to 10 and will not look natural. So having figured out how to change the parameters of the database that controls the color of the sphere when day and night change. Let's move to the cloud component. The clouds are made using a static mesh on which a material having a large number of parameters is superimposed. The parameters of this material are regulated from a database called Weather. Weather database takes precedence over day-night sky. Therefore, when we need to change the weather, a special Boolean variable named Amendment Null is triggered, 
which switches the logic and data on how the sky should change its values and the clouds begin to be taken from the weather database. There are three types of weather in this pack, namely clear, cloudy and uh, rainy. Weather changes after a random time, maximum and minimal scale of which you can change. To do that you need to find BP weather and open it. After that you need to find the function called weather change. Ok, that's it. So you must change these two values to change the time of how long the weather will last. last. So weather, as mentioned earlier, changes after a random amount of time. After the current mode has expired, the change weather function is called, which randomly determines the new weather mode. Everything is very simple. For this, a special variable has been created that controls this parameter. In order to change the speed, you just need to indicate how many minutes the day and night will change. To do this, go to BP Weather and find the minutes per day variable. Also, if you want to set the start time, then you need to go to the BP Weather again and find the start hour variable. There is a very nice bonus in this project, a tornado. It's made using two special static meshes and materials. No particles, which is why performance will not fall. A tornado appears during rain, but you can customize its appearance to your preference. To do this, go to BP Weather and find the control, rain and tornado function. In this function you can remove the appearance of a tornado or for example limit the time at which it will appear. Going into this material you will see a large number of parameters. All of them will help you create a tornado that will appeal to you. Now I will demonstrate the capabilities of the material.
During thunderstorms, lightning usually occurs. That is why we added lightning to our pack. Lightning is a procedural object. This means that it has an arbitrary shape, always different. To find the zipper, you need to go to BP Lightning Master Child Sky. In this BP, you can configure what lightning will be. There are a huge number of settings, so you can create absolutely any zipper. Lightning appears during rain at a certain interval, but you can change the time between its appearance and also remove it altogether. To do this, go to BP Sky Sphere Space and find the Control Sky Dependent Weather function. In this place, you can easily adjust the frequency of the appearance of lightning as well as completely remove its appearance just by disconnecting this node. It is no secret that it rains during rainy weather. We have rain too. It's made using the sprite GPU in particle. The mechanics are simple. In the rain, an actor with a particle appears above you and is attached to your character. This is necessary so that everything is optimized and to save frame per second. If you, for example, don't need a thunderstorm as in the video, then you can reduce the number of drops and splashes using a special parameter named rate drops. To do this, go to BP Rain and change the following values. Also, you can completely remove the appearance of rain. To do this, open BP Weather, Control Rain and Tornado, and to uh, do this, you just need to unplug the following logic. At a random time of the day, meteor shower occurs, which also lasts for a random amount of time. The call of this event comes from BP Weather. So, let's take a look at this logic. Here we can see two random nodes, so let's talk about the left one. It shows the time after which meteor shower will again be caused. For example, if meteor shower has just begun, then it will be called again after a random number of game hours from 16 to 24. You can change the, this value at your discretion. So let's uh, take a look on the right uh, random float in range node. Uh, well, uh, the numbers of this node shows show you how long the meteor shower will last in the real seconds. This value can also be changed as you want. So let's uh, take a look at BP Meteor Rain, namely at its component. components. So, uh, projectile movement, I think that you know what this. After that we can see P Meteor Shower, it's a particle, so I think that you uh, know what this too. And uh, after that we can see a strange sphere collision, what's this? So let's uh, say a few what words words about that sphere collision is needed in order to detect a collision with the ground and uh, add a particle explosion to the collision site also if a meteorite falls near your character an animation will be played in which the player's camera will swing in addition you can call the function of taking damage if a meteorite falls nearby in the figure you can find the logic for a de adding explosion to the map after a meteorite falls. But I think that uh, you should uh, remember one very important note. So your ground must generate overlap events because event on BP meteor rain on component begin overlap uh, will not cause if your ground mm, don't generate overlap event. It's very important. Uh, because if you will not do like that, then you will not see any um, any explosion particles. So you should remember that. You can easily find function named spawn meteorites 
and uh, you should know that uh, this function controls over how many meteorites appears occurs. So look at this node named random float in range. Here we can see two values, 0 0.2 and 0 0.3. Um, well, what, what, what's this? Um, these values determine the time between meteorites. Thus, you can change the number of meteorites that appear. So it's um, maximal and minimal value of skater, which controls how many meteorites will appear at meteor shower during the meteor shower, yes. To prevent meteor shower from appearing, you just need to go into VP Weather and find the enable meteor shower function and disconnect the logic following it. In case of additional questions, write to our Discord or my email. There I will answer you as detailed as possible. In any case, thank you very much for purchasing this project. We try to make it as high quality and convenient as possible for the end user. Also, if you're satisfied with the product, please rate our project on the Unreal Engine 4 Marketplace. This greatly helps in promoting the project. Stay tuned.